Okay. Uh, well, very good afternoon to everyone. So uh, we are just continuing with a lecture of uh, structure programming in C language. Okay. How we can perform uh, a structure? How we can use the structure programming in C language that we have already started uh, uh, in last week. And uh, so, just uh, before before we are going to, we are going to start a today's discussion. I just uh, need to um, make a, a very short, a brief revision which we have done in the last class. That in the last class, I already discussed with you about how uh, we can handle arrays. Uh, along with the structures. That means how we can create array of structures or how we can create array within structure. So two kinds of array creation I have shown, if you remember, one is that we, we are going to create array as a member of the structure. Okay, if you remember the example of struct student, let me share my screen. So if you remember the example of struct student, in that struct student example, we have created the array within structure. So here, the member of the structure or the elements of the structure is represented in the form of array. Like a student name can be represented here, maximum with 20 bytes or 20 characters. So each name should be less than or equal to 20 bytes, the name of the student. Okay, so it, it will be represented in the form of character array or string. Okay, so this is called array within structure that means array elements sorry structure elements are actually representing themselves as a array of elements right second kind of array uh, with structure we have already discussed that is array of structure that means here instead of taking only one element if we are going to uh, take a, a, a list of variables suppose this structure student is following by only one student here in this given example. So in case of array, instead of one student, we can represent a hundred students. That means all the hundred students of your class are following the similar kind of structure, struct student, which has two members, name and roll number. Okay. And this is called array of structure. So you actually handle this array of structures with the help of for loop or while looping. The looping concept will have to use to handle this array of structure. So it will actually help to reduce the length of the code, the size of the code, as well as the complexity of the code. If you are using array of structure for a large number of variables. For two or three or five variables, we need not to do, need not to use array of structure, but but for more than uh, for a large number of variables, I, I suggest that everyone should use array of structure. Okay, because it will reduce the length of your code as well as the time and complexity of your entire code okay now and, and in the last class i also discussed about how we can use structure through functions so if you remember in the last class i discussed two kind of concept of how we can use structure with functions okay the first concept if you remember that i showed you that how we can pass the elements okay how we can pass the elements, if you remember, structure using function. So how we can pass the elements? This example I have shown in the last class. So we actually pass the members or the elements of the structures along with the variable type. That means we actually passing the members of the structures or the variable of the structures as a arguments or a parameters of a calling function. So this this is a display function which I already discussed. It is a calling function or user defined function through which we are passing three different parameters or arguments separated by commas. So that will be received normally by its corresponding data type variables while we are actually defining that particular user defined function. This is a function definition. Okay, so this is one kind of passing structure, or you can say passing structure members or structure elements through a function. And second time I have shown, instead of passing individual structure elements or individual structure members, we are passing the entire structure through a function. Okay, so if you remember, we will, I have shown this thing, that instead of passing the structure, we have passed the entire structure. Okay, passing the entire structure, the whole structure to a function or the entire structure to a function. So we are actually calling the function 
then then pass the structure variable then we will use the structure variable name only one variable name and that variable will be a structure type okay structure type so in this example this emp variable is a structure type of employee variable okay so this will be received while we actually uh, define the display function this will be received with the help of this variable okay of a structured employee type so these are the topics that i already discussed in the last class today my main motivation is to discuss with you how we can use pointers through structures or how we can pass uh, the address of a structure members through a function okay that means how we can use pointers with structure along with the function all the three kinds of things that we are going to learn today but before we are going to start that is very important in perspective that uh, you are going to learn a new subject in the in your upcoming semester that is data structure and in that data structure subject you have a, a huge application or huge uses of this structure pointer functions array these four kinds of things okay while we are going to implement linked list data structure or when you are going to implement uh, uh, your your uh, uh, the tap queue data structure anything with the help of linked list always you will have to use the concept of structure you will have to use the concept of pointers functions and array okay these are the four concepts which are rigorously used in your future while you are implementing any data structure with the help of linked list data structure okay or linked list type of abstraction so before i am going to uh, discuss uh, with the with the with the conception of the pointers along with the structures just need to uh, discuss with you how we can compare and copying structure variables okay that i had discussed in the last in the, in the last to last class but it was an incomplete discussion so today i want to make a complete discussion of how we can copying and comparing structure variables so if you remember at the at the first class or the introduction class of the structure i had told you some important points or some punch points that you have to remember as a characteristic of the structure that means what are the what are the characteristics the structure should follow and what are the things the structure should not follow that the points will told we will we'll already told you okay and you have already noted down that point in your copy i hope so so here i want to show you how we can compare structure variable okay or how we can copy one structure into another structure that i want to show so two variables of the same structure type can be copied in the same way as ordinary variable what i have what what it has told the first point tells that two variables of the same structure type can be copied in the same way as ordinary variables so ordinary variables how we can do a copy of the ordinary variables suppose you have two variables int a and int b now how we can make the copy of a into b or b into a so if i want to make a copy then we will do simply use a assignment operator a equals to b so that means whatever value your b variable occupy that value will be assigned to a variable right now a and b after this statement a equals to b a and b both variables are similar or are holding similar kind of value so these are copying of two normal variables ordinary variables in c programming the similar concept we are applying while we are copying the same structure type okay same same concept we are going to apply how we can do that this is the way it has been written that if student 1 and student 2 belongs to the same structure then the following statement are valid so student 1 equal to student 2 obviously obviously you have to remember why you are copying the variables of the structure this student 1 and student 2 are the variables i think all of you understand that thing in struct student student 1 and struct student student 2 so this was the variable so obviously student 1 and student 2 must follow the similar template of the structure then only copy copy of two structure variable is possible otherwise not possible obviously the 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 student variable cannot be copied into some some, some employee variable can it be copied no it cannot be copied why because employee variable will follow a template another template of the employee structure which is quite different from the student structure template right and the student variable will follow student template or student structure so you have to copy two structure variables of the similar type which are following the same kind of structure template that you have to remember okay logically you have to be correct right 
So student one equals to student two is possible, or student two equals to student one is possible. Whichever variable you want to copy. Okay. But one thing you should remember: you are not eligible to apply any kind of logical operation like this equals to or not equals to exclamation followed by equals to means not equals to. So any kind of logical operation, greater than, less than, less than equals to any kind of logical operations, you are not allowed to apply directly on the structure variable. Like student one equals to student two is a wrong statement. Compiler will give you error. Then student one not equals to student two is also a wrong statement. But the thing is that you can ask this that then how how is it possible that we can apply logical operation? Obviously, logical operation is very important and it should be needed. The thing is that we cannot apply the logical operation on the directly structure variables, but we are able to apply logical operation on the structure members. What I have said, we are not able to apply the logical operation on the structure variables directly, like this. These two are the wrong statement. Okay, the C compiler will give you error. But we can we are eligible to apply the logical operation on to onto the structure members or structure elements accessed by these variables. As for example, suppose student, if you remember the struct student contains the contains this name and roll number or marks, whatever you say, these are the members of the structure student student. That is a template, the member of the template structure student. Suppose student one dot marks equals to equals to student two dot marks. It is allowed. What I have said, student one dot marks equal to equals to student two dot marks. It is allowed. Or student one dot roll number is equal to equals is equal to student two dot roll number. It is allowed. Or student one not equals student one dot roll number not equals to student two dot roll number. It is also allowed. So dot operator by the for dot operator. I think this conception is already clear to you. We can access the variable of a structure can access each and every structure member or elements with the help of dot operator or membership operator. I, I already told you. So if if this structure variable student one and student two access any one of the members and try to compare that both the structure variable contain the similar value of, of for that particular kind of member. That means whether student one and student two are, are similar or not. How we can check the student one and student these two are two different student as per this. Variable naming, naming convention. So how we can check whether these two students, student one and student two, are equal or not, or similar or not, by the help of its roll number. If student one roll number is equal to equals to student two dot roll number, then we can say they are equal. Okay. Always name name comparison. We can also compare the names. Student one dot name is equal to student two dot name. But then name comparison should be in different way because it, it is a string. It should be compared with this str cmp this kind of thing. Okay. With the help of this built-in function. But I, I I think logically the comparison of the names should not be done because it may be possible both the students contain the similar names. But the roll number can always be unique form. Roll number cannot be copied. Two students must have two different roll number or two unique roll numbers. So that's why the similarity between two students can be easily checked with the help of the roll number convention. Even Mark's name can also contribute in a very light way. So, if we need to compare the structure variables, we may do so by comparing members individually, right? Clear? So, let's show you one program. That program I, I did for you. So, this is a struct student. This is a student a structure type template which contains two members, name and roll number. Okay. Now it is a global structure. I have already told the structure which will be declared outside the main method is the global structure, and the structure which is which is which can be declared within the main method is the local structure. Okay, but I have declared the variable locally of that structure, struct student. You can also declare this variable global okay, if your choice. Now I have declared only one student, student one, and in the first three statements, I actually taken the name and roll number as a runtime input through the terminal. Of the student one, the first student, right? By the help of student one dot name and student and person student one dot role, right? Now, this is another variable of the same structure template has been defined or has been declared, right? So the variable name is student two, and I did this operation for you. Student two is equal to student one. So in this in this program, I have shown both the comparison. The logical comparison of the two structure members as well as the 
copying of a structure member into another structure member both the things okay so these are copying copying means we copy the student one structure variable into student two structure variable so right now student two also contains a similar kind of values which student one contains after this copying statement so this is actually used for the copying copying structure okay and so whether the copy has been done correctly or not that means whether student 2 is actually contains the values of student 1 or not for checking this we actually print the name and roll number of the student 2 in this way i think it is clear to everyone now this statement is mainly useful to check whether the two students are equal or not okay actually there is no no value of using else because uh, if you are doing copy so always it should be equal if you are doing copy of one structure variable to another structure variable always two structure variable have contain the must contain the similar value okay so that's why the if statement will be enough to do that so here the logical comparison operation is actually performing in this if statement so i think all of you are already familiar with str cmp string compare function is a part of this data file string dot h so here it is a string comparison i have already told because we are comparing the two names of the students so that's why we have to use string compare function is it clear to everyone if the string compare function returns zero that means both the names are, are similar if it returns one that means both the names are dissimilar okay and logical and operations we actually apply and we are comparing the roll numbers of two students here we don't need to use str cmp why because roll numbers are integer values not string values okay so we can directly compare by the double equals to sign of of this roll number okay and then we can print the statement student one and student two are similar or same i am going to execute this program in front of you first it will demand the enter the members for the student one members means name and roll number suppose student one contains john the name is john and roll number suppose 15 so student 2 has also similar name and roll number because we have already done the copy successfully so that's why i have printed these two statements for student 2 so we can check or verify that whether the copying has been done successfully or not so after checking this statement we can easily conclude it that copying has been done successfully of the two two structure variable now this statement will also verify that two student members which we have already compared one is the name member Another one, is, another one is the roll number members okay of both the structure variables student one and student two we have compared it so in that case both are similar in nature clear everyone clear anyone has any doubt is it clear to everyone copying and comparing structures concept is clear to everyone is it clear give me a response is it clear to everyone yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Now comes into the next concepts. Uh, the, the, this concept is called a structure within another structure or nested structure. So already we have already done the concept of nested structure, implement the concept of nested structure in several topics in C programming, like nested if loop, nested for loop, nested while loop. So this kind of concept we have already. So we already have a overall idea what is a nested. Nested means if we declare one particular type within another type, then it is called nested, nested type. So here the type is a structure. That means we are declaring the structure, one structure within another structure, right? So let's check this structure declaration very, very carefully. Everyone, check this structure declaration very, very carefully. Struct personal record, the structure name is personal record. Within the personal record, it has five members, okay? Name, character array, day of birth month of birth year of birth okay so these three members are representing the similar kind of concept but in three different forms one is month of birth and then is day of birth and last one is year of birth okay last member is the salary which is the float type and we have declared one variable person of this structure personal record kind of type okay so this is not a nested structure I repeat, this is not our nested structure. This is a simple structure declaration. Now, if I want to make a nested structure declaration, then it should look like this. These are nested structure declaration. Try to understand. 
this is the original structure this is the original structure struct partner which is which is similar to this structure okay only only the thing is that if you look at the second member variable of this structure very carefully everyone look at the second member variable of this original structure personal record the second member variable is also a structure type that is struct date birthday struct date birthday so birthday is a variable of this structure type date clear now we have to define this structure type again or declare this structure type again otherwise the compiler will not be able to create the birthday variable of this structure type if it is not not existing in your program so that's why the structure struct date we are going to create here okay so that means here nested means we should not write this entire structure within this structure that we actually did in case of if loop while loop for loop in this in, in those cases here we have to write two structures separately but one structure is called from the other structure or within the other structure in such a way so within struct date it has three different kinds of date representation day of birth month of birth and year of birth so all the three members are present of struct date and one birthday has been created for a particular employee that but the variable has been created that follows this structure template that follows this structure template this one this is called this is called a nested structure now one common question comes to your mind sir it is possible that we are going to access this member variables with the help of this person by the help of dot operator right suppose i will ask you uh they please access the member variable salary with the help of this person variable of this structure personal record how you can access it person dot salary i think all of you know that percent f is a uh, access specifier then person dot salary okay if you want to read the value then m person percent dot salary if you want to print the value then only person dot salary right or if you want to access name then percent s is an access specifier then person this person dot name so dot operator will be responsible to access this now the thing is that if you want to access this members of within a another structure that is with the upper next structure if you want to access suppose day of birth day of birth or month of birth this kind of variable how we can access it that is the question so this is the way of accessing it. very simple why how that person is a is a is a variable of the personal record within which another nested structure has been declared or defined whose variable is birthday so first person variable the outside outside structure variable dot the internal structure variable person dot birthday then again dot the internal structure variable has the has the capability or power to access the member of the nested structure so dot day of birth so in in this way you can access all the member variables one after another this is called a member and this is the this is a normal way of accessing the member variables of the outer outer structure and this is the way of accessing the member variable of the inner structure or nested structure so i did not write any program for you i left the i leave this program for you i'm leaving this to you for for your own practice okay how you can create structure within another structure or nested structure or inner structure okay go through this ppt i am going to share this ppt and you are going to you are able to create that one. okay clear i think this concept is clear to everyone how we can access members of structure within structure how we can declare a nested structure is this concept clear to everyone anyone has any doubt is it clear to everyone yes sir clear very good now these are the a uh, very important topic that i have already discussed to you now i am going to discuss with another and very important very very important topic for uh, your campusing point of view as well as for the subjects which you are going to learn in future so how we can handle pointers uh, through structures or how you can pass pointers through structure so our topic name is pointer to structure pointer to structure okay so as all of you know pointer is such kind of uh, variable which will hold the address of another variable Okay, I have already did. I have, we have already covered the pointer tab, pointer chapter, and I have already uh, discussed in a in a broader way that how pointers 
can be declared, how pointer variables can be used, so how we can pass the pointer variables so instead of uh, passing the direct value, we can pass the address. And what are the advantage benefits of using pointer variables? I have discussed discuss it all. Okay. Now I have I want to show you that how we can access the members of a structure. How we can access the member of a structure by declaring the pointer variable as a variable type of a structure type. That means look at this declaration very carefully. Here I have created a structure of a book by the struct book, which has three members, the name of the book, the number of pages, int pages means number of pages of the book, and float price. Price means what is the price of the book that has been mentioned, the three members are there. Now, we generally prefer to create one variable of that book, which will follow this template, okay? One or two variable. So here, instead of creating the normal variable, or ordinary variable, we are going to create here a pointer variable. Start BPTR. This start will work like a pointer variable. Now, however, this declaration for a pointer to structure does not allocate any memory for a structure, but allocates only for a pointer. So that to access structures members through pointer BPTR, we must allocate the memory using malloc function. Okay, we have to allocate the memory using malloc function. Now, I am going to discuss about this malloc function in our next class. Okay, right now we just need to know. I'm going to show you the code. You just need to know how we can design a malloc function. So malloc, calloc, realloc, these three kind of function we generally prefer to use for dynamic memory management type of thing. Okay, that means till now we have learned the the the, the array data structure which will actually uh, a fixed kind of uh, memory structure, a fixed kind of memory allocation, the contiguous memory allocation is performing. Here, in case of malloc, calloc, or realloc, this kind of memory function, malloc means memory, M for memory, Alloc means allocation. M for memory, alloc means allocation. Right. So memory allocation functions, but it is a dynamic type. That means the size that this function is scalable in nature. Scalable means the size of or, or the assigning size or, or, or occupancy into the computer memory system can be increased or decreased as per the demands of the user. Okay, that is the major role of any dynamic memory allocation function. There are three kind of functions we generally use for dynamic memory allocation. Malloc, calloc, calloc means C-A-L-L-O-C, okay, and realloc, R-E-A-L-L-O-C. Okay, malloc, calloc, realloc. Malloc is most widely used, then followed by calloc, and realloc basically used for different purpose for reallocation of the memory. So each and individual function that we are going to discuss in later, okay. Right now, you need to know if we declare this member variable, of the structure as a pointer variable okay the variable of a structure as a pointer variable so it will actually points to the address of the first variable now by the help of this pointer we are able to access individual members or elements of the structure book okay individual elements of the structure book how we can access it this is the way of accessing it try to understand this is the or please look at this concept this is the or so either you can use this way to access or you can use this way to access. I suggest you, you should remember both the way of accessing the member variable. Okay, because while the output finding kind of concept will be given, so they can they can be used any one of these. And here this operator is not an arrow operator. Look, arrow operator is, it does not exist in your keyboard, right? So is to, to represent arrow operator, you have to first use dash, okay, simple dash, then followed by a greater than sign. That is the arrow operator. Okay, so there is no button in your machine in your system which represents arrow operator directly. You have to use dash, simple dash or minus sign, whatever you say, and then followed by a get a done sign. That is the arrow operator. Clear. And this arrow operator, and there must be a pointer to the structure on the left side of this operator. There must be a pointer to a to the structure on the left side of the operator. So so in the in case of arrow operator, arrow operator is only used for the pointer and the structure type, right? So this arrow operator. At the right hand side of the arrow operator always remain a pointer variable a pointer member sorry structure member or structure variable member okay so these are structure member name or a structure member pages or a structure member price and this bptr is a pointer variable which points to individual structure member okay it is a pointer variable which acting 
to pointing the address of individual structure. This pointing means what it will point. It will point the starting address of individual structure members. And by the help of this, we can also able to act. Let me show you one code. This is one simple code I have written for you. Suppose we have a, a global structure person, which has uh, two variables, age and weight. And these are the pointer variables that I have uh, declared for you. I have declared for two pointer variables, not this, this, these two are ordinary variables, and these two are the pointer variables. Why we record ordinary variables? Yes, it has some work of, of defining these ordinary variables. So you will get that thing in later. So here, two pointer variables I have defined person PTR and person PTR new. Both are pointer variables. And these two are the ordinary variables, person one and person two. So I have already told pointer variable is always stored the address the address of the ordinary variable right that is the point of variable job so so this variable should store an address of another variable then which variable address it will store it will store the address of our normal variable person one so instead of directly accessing with the person one we are accessing by the address of the person one that is the point of variable i think it is clear to you so person ptr equal to m person person one and person with person ptr new is equal to m person person two so I didn't use M person person two here for sake of simplicity. I'm just using only M person person one. So you can also create this M person person two. Okay, person PTR new is equal to M person person two. You can also write or also use it. And I have I have uh, read this one in such a way and then write or, or or print the values of these two variables in such a way. Okay. So so this scanf by the help of scanf. 